Welcome back, Fantasy Moto fans, to the Pulp MX Fantasy Show. I'm Donnie from Roto Moto. In this video, I have five writers I want you to look at when making your picks for Atlanta 2022, tips for the FFL, weather report, race day schedule, and an early look at what my team could be come Saturday night. And stick around to the end to find out how you could win some race use and autograph memorabilia, even if you aren't good at the game. This weekend is the first of two East-West showdowns for the 250 class this year, and the handicaps in that class are tight. So it looks to be a challenging week for fantasy players. For those of you that are new to the format, the East and West Coast riders each get their own heat races, but share the same LCQ. So nine riders from each coast are guaranteed to make the main, but it is possible for up to 13 on one coast to make the cut. Any East rider you pick in St. Louis will not be available to you this weekend, and any East riders you pick for the showdown will be locked out next weekend in Foxborough, so keep that in mind as you look through the rosters. Looking at injuries, St. Louis claimed a few casualties, with Kyle Peters, Cameron McAdoo, and Dean Wilson all suffering serious injuries that are going to sideline them for multiple rounds this season. But the silver lining is that we do have two high-profile guys coming back to race Atlanta Motor Speedway. Austin Fortner returned to the 250 class after breaking his collarbone in Arlington, and Cooper Webb is lining up after skipping St. Louis to heal up from a practice crash. Before I give you my favorite picks in the class, I just want to briefly touch on the weather. It does look like rain is probable and a complete mutter is possible. I will be making rider recommendations based on the track being at least raceable while also leaning towards veteran and factory guys that are better equipped to handle the slop if needed. But if the weather does turn out to be terrible, these picks may need to be revised. I have three guys to target, one to avoid, and a high handicap guy for you gamblers out there, starting with the little class, working our way up with only seven all-stars to pick and the two favorites operating with a zero. I'm going with a little more cushion with a wet forecast with Hunter Lawrence. The elder HRC Honda rider is second in points on the West Coast and has finished on the podium every single round except one. And with his GP experience and outdoor prowess, I like him as the safest all-star in the 250 class. Another 250 class rider I like is also from the West Coast and that's Nate Thrasher. The star racing Yamaha rider is no stranger to the Atlanta Motor Speedway, finishing first, fourth, and first during the residency in 2021, even winning those two rounds after being forced to the LCQ. The Tennessee native has finished in the top 12 in nine out of 10 gate drops this year, with two top fives to his name already. Already, he has a great chance to score massive points with a relatively low handicap. On the 450 side, let's talk All-Star. There are only seven options this weekend, and one sticks out as the worst in the field, and that's Marvin Muskin. The Red Bull KTM rider has a one handicap thanks to finishing third, third, and first in his last three races. But prior to those three rounds, he had an average finish of 7.9, which also happens to lay right in line with his 7.79 in Atlanta last year. Look, I'm not saying Marv can't back up his recent finishes, but he's only finished in the top two in three of 17 gate drops this season, and there are just better all-star options out there. A 450 rider that I do like this week is Ryan Brees. The privateer has an average finish of just 16.9 this season, but has been one of the biggest beneficiaries of the thinning field in front of him. In the last six main event gate drops, Ryan is averaging a 12th place finish with two 10th place finishes under his belt. If it gets sloppy, I'll probably fade any and all privateer heroes, but if the surface looks raceable, Ryan's my guy. The high handicap hero of the round given to a rider with a handicap of 10 or more that I think has a realistic chance to score massive points this weekend if you're the type of person that likes to sweat out a little LCQ for a big payout. This weekend, look no further than the most controversial pit in the weekend and the man behind it, Logan Carnell. The Kawasaki Privateer was as solid as a rock last weekend, going 15-15-15 but somehow managing to finish 16th. This set him up with a 10 handicap this weekend, and with four 15th place finishes in his last five main event gate drops, there is no more of a lock from a double digit handicap than the Amherst Ohio native. Moving on to the FFLs, this is the absolute longest start straight of the year in the 250 class. These three guys have accounted for over half of all FFLs this season. I have Christian penciled in as the favorite, not just because he has the most this season, but with this long of a start, he is the one most equipped to ace the FFL on Saturday. The 450 still leans Eli Tomac. He has a quarter of all FFLs this season, and like Craig, he is likely foaming at the mouth thinking of that massive start straight with that star racing Yamaha between his legs. 
We head all the way back to the East Coast, but it is the first of a string of day races that are as unkind to the West Coast as the early season is to the East. Race Day Live kicks off at 9 a.m. local time, which is a disgusting 6 a.m. for those on the Pacific Coast. Rotomoto Patreons will get the enhanced cheat sheets first at roughly 1 p.m. Eastern, and I will have them out for the rest of you on Pulp MX Fantasy Twitter and Instagram accounts about 90 minutes before the show. And the picks lock, the gates drop at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Before I show you my early team, I want to talk to you about Max's Tire coming on for all 17 rounds so I can deliver these videos for you. You know Max's Tire. You know their MXST tire designed by the king of Supercross and my all-time favorite rider, Jamie McGrath. It is the newest and most advanced tire in the Max's MX lineup, featuring an all-new tread pattern, compounded composition to provide the stability, predictability, and traction that the upper tiers of motocross demand. The entire SGB Honda team runs Maxxis on their race bikes, including Pulp MX show favorites and on-again, off-again rivals Alex Ray and Kate Clayson, available at your local retailer and also at motosport.com. My Thursday team looks like this. Give me HRC Honda Hunta with a two handicap as my all-star. Star Racing Yamaha's Nate Thrasher with a double eligible two. Rockstar Husqvarna's Jalik Swole with a four and Wiley veteran Chris Blose rounding out the squad with a six. 450s, I have the returning Cooper Webb with a six handicap for my all-star. Privateer Ryan Brace out of five. Also going with another Blue Crew Privateer with Kyle Chisholm and his four handicap, as well as Troll Train Alex Martin bringing honor to the Club MX Yamaha squad with an eight. The prize for the highest score in Atlanta will be an autographed jersey worn by this man, but if you're not great at fantasy, that is okay. If you want a chance to win something like this, Cade Clayson side panel from his career best 10th place finish in Detroit this season, consider joining me on Patreon. For just about $1 per week, you are entered to win race shoes and autograph memorabilia and insiders and above double their entries, as well as an exclusive podcast talking fantasy stats on every rider in the field and those enhanced cheat sheets that come out every single Saturday. Link for that will be found in the description below. And don't forget to follow Pulp MX Fantasy and Roto X Moto on both Instagram and Twitter for injury updates as the weekend rolls on, qualifying info and stats and banner throughout the race itself and those fantasy cheat sheets once qualifying is done and wrapped. Thanks as always for watching the Pulp MX Fantasy show presented by Max's Tire. My name's Donnie. May your chizzes chizz this weekend. Remember that eight is great. And most importantly, have fun. Good luck, y'all.